Hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible, Verse by Verse, a plain and simple study through the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. We are in Leviticus chapter 23. And as we were saying, we're, we're going, actually we're looking, we're, we're actually coming up on the closing, the final chapters of this book. I'm just reading through again, kind of swiftly, because these are, like I say, under normal, if, if we were living in Israel in this time, under this circumstances, we wouldn't probably have access to this book because it's not really, <laughs> me, not really written, written to us because we're not priests. We get the benefit of this kind of insight, and though it is sometimes meticulous, long, and tedious, um, it the purpose, of course, remember, it is for priests. It was their operating manual. You know, when you get... Um, um, you buy something, a blender, a TV, um, anything, right? It comes with an operating manual, and you can read that manual. When you get stuck, you can go back to that manual. How do you set the manual? I mean, how do you set the product up? Everything. All right, so that's what we are going to. We're going to kind of. Uh, in chapter 23. He says, then Moses, then the Lord spoke to Moses, speak to the Israelites and tell them, these are my appointed times, the times of the Lord that you will proclaim as a sacred uh, assembly. Now, um, there were three holidays that he's going to again talk about. Um, and then again, this is the command of it. In other words, if you don't do it, this is what will happen. So there were three holiday festivals that he is going to again go over um, when we get to the book of Numbers we're going to hear these things again I think even when we get to Deuteronomy we hear these things God we hear these things again God is very repetitive okay um, so the, yeah there is a reason why he is saying this there's a reason why he is speaking this but there were three major holidays commanded by God. Later on, there will be a couple of the holidays. One of the most more famous one is the holiday of Purim, that will be uh, that will uh, start and be given in the time of Esther. But these ones come directly from God. Okay. Verse three. Work must be may be done for six days, but on the seventh day, there must be a Sabbath of complete rest. Um, a sacred assembly and you are not to do any work it is the Sabbath to you wherever you live these are the okay um we'll come back to this because there's gonna be an incident with this with the Sabbath day there's gonna be a couple of incidents where you know in the next couple of chapters we're gonna see a couple of people get put to death because they actually violate this um, but the Sabbath day worship, the Sabbath uh, work rest is you work six days, six days, and then you rest on the Sabbath. Now their Sabbath would have been the last day of the week, and that would have started on a. It starts Friday evening at sundown. So whenever sundown is, okay, so that varies probably, of course, during the time of year, but sundown, right? <clears throat> and it lasts all the way into Saturday evening sundown. So that's, the, and that's considered the last day of the week. So he said you do the work on the six days, but then the Sabbath day is a complete rest. Now he's going to get into more details about the seventh year Sabbath and so forth but we get to that later verse 4 these are the Lord's appointed times <coughs> the sacred assemblies you are to proclaim at their appointed time the Passover to the Lord comes in the first month at the twilight of the 14th day of the month now um, the festival of unleavened bread to the Lord is on the 15th day of the same month For seven days you must eat unleavened bread 
on the first day you are to hold a sacred assembly you are not to do any daily work you are to present a fire offering to the Lord for seven days on the seventh day there will be a sacred assembly you must not do any daily work of course this is called Passover right unleavened bread Passover and this of course celebrates when they came out of Israel remember the very night verse 9 the Lord spoke to Moses speak to the Israelites and tell them whenever you enter the land I'm giving you and you reap its harvest you are to bring the first sheaf of your harvest to the um, to the priest he will wave the sheaf before the Lord so that you may be accepted and the priest is to wave it on this on the day after the Sabbath on the day you wave the sheaf you are to offer a year old lamb male lamb without blemish as a burnt offering to the Lord its grain offering is to be four quarts and four and fine flour mixed with oil as a fire offering to the Lord a pleasing aroma and its drink offering will be one quart of wine you must not eat bread roasted grain or any new grain until this very day and until you have brought the offering to God this is the permanent statute throughout your generations wherever you live hmm. all right um then he says you want to count seven complete weeks starting from the day after the Sabbath the day you were brought the day you brought the sheaf of the uh, presentation uh, presentation offering and you want to count 50 days until the day after the Sabbath and then present an offering of new grain to the Lord bring two loaves of bread from your settlements as a presentation offering each of them made from four quarts of fine flour baked with yeast as the first fruits to the Lord you are to present with the bread seven unblemished male lambs and seven year old bulls and two rams and they will be a burnt offering to the Lord with the grain offering and drink offering and a fire offering of a pleasing aroma to the Lord you are also to prepare one male goat as the sin offering and two male lambs uh, a year old at the fellowship offering and the priest will wave the lamb with the bread uh, first fruit at the presentation offering before the Lord and the bread and the two lambs will be holy to the Lord for the priest on the same day you are to make a proclamation and hold a sacred assembly you are not to do any daily work this is a permanent statute wherever you live throughout your generations and when you reap the harvest of your land you are not to reap all of the way to the edges of your of your field and gather the gleanings of the harvest leave them for the poor and for the foreign resident I am the Lord your Yahweh now <clears throat> this was of course obviously would have been around October the harvest time so this was another holiday uh, when they would come into the land they would make the pilgrimage to Jerusalem eventually or wherever the Holy Seat is right in this case okay it's not Jerusalem and then notice he also said that they are to make it wherever they live okay um, but notice in verse 22 when he says when you reap the harvest of the land you are to leave some of the edges you are to leave some of it for the poor so and I, I said this before this is actually kind of two I think this is killing two birds with one stone one you can see how God is taking care of the poor by telling <clears throat> the farmers not to be greedy because they would be there are people who are just that greedy they would they would take up every single grain that they could and sell it and God is saying no 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 if some fall off and he says don't don't go leave the edges and that was for the poor but also note that the poor was to come and harvest it 
And we're not talking about the sick, of course, those who are unable to. But the poor was to come and glean their own. Um, and I, I say this, that welfare, if, 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 if it's just you're collecting a check that is horrible, it is bad for people, it is bad for their morale, their ethic, and everything else. Anyway, verse 23. The Lord spoke to Moses, tell the Israelites in the seventh month, and on the first day of the month, you ought to have a day of complete rest, so, uh, commemoration, and joyful shouting and sacred assembly. You must not do any daily work, but you must present a fire offering to the Lord. So you, the Sabbath, all of this is all probably in the same family of, a, of the Sabbath day rest. In other words, it's going to fall on the Sabbath day, and then it also is going to be these holidays, these three holidays, that the God is commanding the people to celebrate. Verse 26. The Lord again spoke to Moses, the tenth day of the seventh month is the day of atonement. You are to hold a sacred assembly and practice self-denial. You are to present a fire offering to the Lord. On this particular day, you are not to do any work, for it is the day of atonement, and to make atonement for yourselves before the Lord, uh, your God. Now, we talked about this, how Aaron, the priest, or the high priest of that day, We'll go into the priest, I mean, go in there once a year. Big deal, right? The whole big deal. This day of atonement, this sacrifice here. And only Aaron could go into um, and make that sacrifice. And obviously this becomes a symbol of Jesus' sacrifice, for uh, 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 atoning sacrifice. Verse 29. If a person does not practice self-denial on this particular day, he must be cut off from the people. I will destroy among his people anyone who does any work on this same day. Now, keep this in mind right here because this is sort of a foreshadowing of what is to come. You are not to do any work. This is a permanent statute throughout your generations, wherever you live. It will be a Sabbath of complete rest for you. And you must practice self-denial. You are to observe your Sabbath from the evening of the ninth day of the month until the following evening. Verse 33. The Lord spoke to Moses, tell the Israelites, uh, the festival of boots, uh, the festival of booth, boots to the Lord beginning on the 15th day of the seventh month and continue for seven days. This is to be a sacred assembly on the first day, you are not to do any daily work. Um, you are to present a fire offering to the Lord for seven days. And on the eighth day, you are, you are to hold a sacred assembly and present a fire offering to the Lord. It is a solemn gathering. You're not to do any daily work. So if you can, again, you're not to do work on the Sabbath. This will be drummed into the Israelites. <clears throat> These are the Lord's appointed time that you are to proclaim as a sacred assembly for presenting fire offerings to the Lord, burnt offerings and grain offerings, sacrifice and drink offerings, each on this designated day. These are in addition to the offerings of the Lord's uh, um, the offering for the Lord's Sabbaths, your gifts and all your vow offerings and your free will offerings. Uh, that you give to the Lord, verse 39. You are to celebrate the Lord's festival on the 15th day of the seventh month for seven days. After you have gathered and produce the produce of the land, there will be a complete rest on the first day and a complete rest on the eighth day. On the first day, you are to take the product of majestic trees, uh, palm uh, fronds, bowl, bowls, and leafy trees, the willow, of the brook and rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You have to celebrate it as a festival to the Lord seven days each year. This is the permanent statue for you throughout your generations. You must celebrate it in the seventh month. Okay, so the seventh month, of course, that would be what? July, our July. Verse 42 
you are to live in the boots for seven days. This is called the festival of boots, by the way. You are to live in boots, he says. You are to live in the boots for seven days. All the native born Israel must live in boots so that your generations may know that I made the Israelites live in boots when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh your God. So Moses declared the Lord's appointed times to Israel. So, <clears throat> again, I know it's kind of a tedious chapter. And as I said, these under normal circumstances, we wouldn't even read this. But it also kind of showed, uh, it. Let me let me back up and say something. The priests were also to teach this too. So even though we don't live it, they also were to teach it. All right, guys. Um, chapter 24 in the next study. I will see you then.